Hello, good day and welcome back. So today we're going to be looking at a variable in the OS package called args. That's the args variable, okay? As for arguments, short for arguments. So what are arguments? Arguments are options you can pass to your program or application. Now you're going to often hear them, most people are going to say command line option arguments or options because you pass them on the command line. We'll get to the example just now where you see it. I, I'm showing how you can do that. But really what you want to think of it as just your program slash application arguments. Now I put a star there at the end of, you know, since you don't need a command line to pass them star, because on some in some operating system, uh, if you're using Windows, for example, and Linux, it's fairly easy for you to create a uh, startup icon that launches your application and specify what kind of arguments to pass this. Even if you don't invoke it from the command line, you can still pass some arguments to it. On Mac, it's a little bit harder. You have to go into the package, you have to do a lot of things. So that's where that star comes from. But basically, you want to think of it as the arguments that your program accept or um, you know expect. Now, in our example there, you can see I have this program called Awesome, and I'm passing some arguments to it. Uh, all those you can consider they are all arguments to the program. And we're going to take a look just now and see how we can parse those or have access to it. All right. So, as I said before, the args is a variable and it holds the command line arguments just when you're starting your program. And so, this is what we're going to spend our time looking at in this video. So, what we're going to do is I'm going to make a directory, I'm going to cd into it. I'm going to start the code editor, nothing different than what we usually do. I'm going to create a CLI directory, go into that, and I'm going to start writing the program. <laughs> program is going to be very simple. Since we know that um, os.args is a variable and it's just a slice of string, the first thing we're going to do is just iterate over it, iterate using a for loop, and we're going to print it out. We're going to print out the index and the value. And so that's going to give us a pretty good idea of at least what is being passed to us, um, in, for example. So now that we see how you can print out the arguments, now let's look at how you can um, further um, specify, like if you have multiple words that you want to specify, you can just enclose them in quotes. And now single quotes and double quotes have different meanings. So I'm showing some example here. So if you enclose things in single quotes or um, it would be treated as one um, thing, one argument, regardless of how long it is. But also, single quote means that whatever comes inside it is not evaluated, it's taken literally. So hence this example failed because we had a single quote and then we tried to escape it with another single quote. But again, anything between a single quote, just taken literally. So that second, for the second single quote ended the argument and anything after it just meant there was an open set of arguments. Now with double quotes, Everything inside the double quotes can get evaluated. Now, don't worry what this, what this really means right now. It just simply means that the shell, when it sees double quotes, it says anything in between it, I can go uh, evaluate that. And so that's why we can escape another double quotes inside. We can put variables to be evaluated, but that's beyond the scope of what we're trying to do here with Go. So I'm not really going to get into all of that. I'm just trying to show you, basically, if you have multiple words and you want it to be treated with one argument, enclose it in quotes. If you're confused as to which quote you should use, whether single or double quote, just always go with single quote. You're pretty much going to be safe that way. Now that we have that, let's create a touch a, a file and a symbolic link to that file. And then we're going to create two directories. And then we're going to pass invoke our application with those file names and the directory names. And of course, it should just echo it just as we're accustomed to see, because as far as our program is concerned, you creating files and you passing the file name, it doesn't know that those are file name yet. Um, but one feature you can do, your shell might have, is being able to expand, um, you know, file names. So um, an example of this is that we have the file file a and file ln, and I could just type file star, and my shell is going to expand it to be the same thing. So nothing surprising there. Same thing we've been seeing. Now, let's go back to our application, and we're going to write a function that's going to take a string, which is going to be a expected to be a file name. And our function is going to return what type of file this is. So it's either going to return that oh, this is a direct directory, a file, or this is not a directory or a file. Well, and of course, if it doesn't exist, it should be able to say that this doesn't exist. And so we're going to start off by using os.stat. And of course, if that fails, then we know that oh, 
this file or directory does not exist, whatever you intended. And then if we don't have an error, then we can check to see if it's a directory. And if it's a directory, we'll just return is a directory. And then if it's not a directory, then it's a file. Now, again, we're ignoring all the other things that it could be if it's not a directory, like a socket and all these other things, right? And so now we just go back up and we loop over and we're gonna call our function repeatedly to get these values. And now we're going to run our program. And that's what we get as the output. But one of the things you might wanna do is, we always printing out the name of our application. We don't wanna print that out. So we can just take that out from the loop by slicing it out. And now when we run our program, we build it of course and we run it and we don't have the file name. And of course, if we retest it, using a non-existent file, we can see that, um, you know, it's going to say this is not a directory or a file, a file or a directory. All right, so that's it. Um, very simple example, I think. Um, thanks for your time. Please subscribe, thumbs up the video, and see you in the next video. Take care. Have a great day.